VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome to episode 8 of VIP Access and this week I'm taking you to Uganda. Woo-hoo! I'm about to speak to the prince, fresh prince, not prince, he's fresh, okay, of Kampala. And he came all the way to Nairobi. What an honor to finally get to sit down and speak with the great Flex the Paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mambo. What's good? What's good? We say mambos. What do you say in UG? Um, in Uganda, huh? chiri chiri. Ah, that's so hard. <laughs> yeah. Chiri 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 chiri. Your words. Yeah, like chiri uh, chiri chiri. How is it? Chiri chiri chiri. Chiri chiri. How is it? Chiri chiri. Yeah. And then you say? Ah, uh, steady. Okay, so do it. <laughs> Tell me. Chiri chiri. Steady. Aha, uh-huh, that's how it is. <laughs> Karibu Nairobi, welcome to Nairobi. Asante, Asante. Nairobi yeah. is really nice. And love you were here, here just the other day. Yeah, just like a month ago or something. Yes. Yeah. Wow, I love this. The Ugandans are coming to visit us more often. I know, right? Is it more calm and chill here for uh, you? Or what, what, what is it um, that, that makes you love Nairobi? A uh, change of environment, first of all. Yeah. It's a different environment. No one, is, so calm, no one is hustling you on the streets no, 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 for autographs. It's really, really calm. I love it here. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So for everybody watching and listening, Flex the Paper is a really cool rapper from Kampala, Uganda. I know him because he was introduced to me by um, some industry legends and goats. And when you have the goats identify this other rapper and say, this is the person you need to be listening to. Watch out for him. You actually pay attention. So the likes of me um, and um, Navio and um, Felix from Tribe Uganda always speak very highly of you. And I think from the first time we met or I heard of you, I just felt like there was a good vibe. And there's always been a good vibe between you and uh, me and Navio and and and, and um, Felix and you keep it so like family and cordial. So tell me about your relationship with these artists who a lot of us know yeah. um, and how they got to know about you. And now it's kind of like you're a big happy family. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, I shout out to those guys. I'm humbled to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, for Felix, I think it's because uh, he has been a person who does a lot of uh, media in Uganda in terms of like hip hop. And he specializes in just hip hop yeah. specifically. And with that's his why company, he has the Tribe UG, the, the, the tribe UG yes. um, brand. Yeah, so he has always been connecting, like interviews, advice here from us, the artists, and mm-hmm. things like that. And uh, yeah, I'm proud to see like how he has grown into his Skyland media right now. Uh, then when it comes, of course, Navio, the myth that's clear cut. And we grew up watching these guys back in the day. Of course. These guys had songs when we were still in school. Yeah. So when I finished, like, actually, I think my high school. That's when I got to meet them before I joined university. That's when I got to meet them personally. Then we started releasing music together. And we clicked like the vibe was, it was natural, like oh, wow. nothing forced and things oh, like that. Oh, wow. I love so that's how, how it has grown. Yeah. they took you under their wing. You know, it was almost like they signed you, but it's not like they signed you. Did they sign you? No, no, no. Navio is like it's like he, he signed you. Navio is hustling me for Flex. Like you know, Flex's album is out. It's like yeah. Do you know these songs need to be playlisted? Yeah. This one, repeat it again. Yeah. Like he's on your case. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's family, and uh, if someone's genuine and also has the good intentions for you, I guess that's what comes out of it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, like the energy is mutual. You get the I same energy is what I'll give him back. Yeah. I love it. So one thing also that I find uh, unique or uh, like strings that tie you all together is the fact that you're very proud um, to be Ugandan. You're very proud to represent Kampala. Um, and this stands out, you know, from the kind of music you release, the kind of names yes. you give your projects. So your album is called Kampala Boy. Yeah. Uh, the Myth had the album The Ugandan. The Ugandan. Yeah. Um, Navio has vibes out, out, the of, east. out of East. Yeah, out of East Africa. Um, and yeah. Navio is just a representation of like East African um, excellence. You know, when it comes to rap, he's yes. a big name. Nowhere yeah. in Africa you're going to go and they don't mention Navio. So as much as he's proudly Ugandan and, you know, he has his Kenyan yeah. roots, um, he does represent East Africa quite well and also UG. So tell me about this. Um, die had love for your country and city because you all yes. represent to the max. <laughs> I guess, uh, first of all, uh, with the competition that goes on in the music industry, and I can't even just say like competition or 
Okay, like how people are all representing where they come from. In Nigeria, they're proud to represent, to say that I'm from Nigeria, mm-hmm. even if they're in the UK, even if they're in the US, they're proud to represent that. Yes. So I guess uh, that identity is something that I also wanted to move with. Like I didn't want to take away the identity because, you know, like the hip hop we do at times, people be like, are you, really, are you really Ugandan? Are you from, you know, that kind of thing. They'll listen yeah. to the song and it sounds different. It's well mastered. It's it's really nice. Until when they hear like a Luganda word in it or... The Swahili word, for example. So someone be like, oh, you guys are Ugandan. So me to call my album Kampala Boy, first of all, is because um, of where I come from. You get because I'm a product of my environment. Like I grew up here. I was born in Kampala. I still have done almost everything of mine. So I know the ins and outs of it. Mm. So the album comes from that. But at the same time, it's to create the identity of where I am when I'm giving it out there. I want people to know what I represent, where I'm coming from. Mm. They'll be like, where's Kampala? Uganda. You and then like, oh, Uganda, Idi Amin, you know, that's the kind of thing. <laughs> that's the first thing they always yes. say. But yeah, so basically it's just about the identity to represent where I'm coming from. Mm. Yeah. I love it. I love it completely. Even they may not be completely 12 because we have an intro from Swahili. Uh, Swahili from Rish Ramad. Uh-huh. It does the intro. Okay. Then we have, um, of course, Navio. Then there is uh, Fikfa Maker. There is uh, Kemisha and the Shina Skies. A pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, there's a lot of artists on there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, did you co-produce part of this album? Did you produce yeah. some of the tracks yourself since you're not just a rapper and artist, but you're yes. also a producer? Yeah. Uh, different songs actually on there. I executive produced them myself. I know the idea that I want to mm. get from a certain song. Yes. So I'll tell the producer I wanted maybe on this part. Okay. We're going to break it like this. Can okay. we change the instruments like this? Basically, it was a work in progress okay. at that time, but... Uh, I really, I had never released an album f- since I've been in this game. It's now ten years, like hip hop. Yeah, it's since been 2012. ten years. Yeah, um, in the making. Yeah, since 2012. No, like just rapping, but never thought of releasing an album. I would Why release did you maybe think one of releasing year. an album? Or I would just, you know, like you're in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you finished like 2014 around yeah. there. So you just release one song, two songs, yeah. you know, things like that. One song a year, two songs a year, and they really work well in yes. Uganda. So I would be like, I'm comfortable because you're yeah. still doing shows, you're still moving. Yeah, yeah. Then in 2017, I released a mixtape uh, called Not For Not Sale. Not For Sale. Yes. So when I released the Not For Sale mixtape and I saw the reception that mm. it got from the people, I was like... And it was actually not for sale. Yeah, it wasn't for sale. But now, right now, we put it online, you know, everyone wants... <laughs> because people want to stream albums, yeah, so yeah, yeah. they want to stream projects. Because people will be like, oh, wait, there's this song you had. I'm like, that was actually on the mixtape, so mm. it's on SoundCloud or things like that. And they're like, no, 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 we want to... Get it on my Spotify. Also, I you need put to get it, on, it online now. Yeah, now it's online. Oh, fantastic! So, yeah, so now people can stream it because people nice. still want to stream it off the because iTunes, those days, Spotify. Because people are not streaming. Yeah, they, they were streaming, but not too much. Not so yeah. much. Yeah, not as many people as now. Yes. So after doing that, I was like, ah, let me just put out an album as well. Okay. Yes. So between not for sale to the release of Kampala Boy, yeah. what would you say has been the most tremendous change that you've encountered as an artist and entertainer? Uh, I think during that period, the first thing I think will be uh, performances. We weren't doing a lot of shows uh, on bigger stages. Mm. We're still doing like the hip hop crowds, yeah, like uh, NGO things, you know, Alliance France, you yes, know, things yes, like this, yes. Gotte Zentrum and stuff like that. Things that are to do with the uh, mm. US mission, things to do with art and culture. Mm. But when something was off the mixtape came out and they were really nice, like they were appealing. I changed the sound, not mm. just strictly hip hop. Mm. I diversified some songs, sound. Uh, they have Afro beats to them. They have a dancehall vibe to them. So those songs end up like really doing too, too well. So you end up performing on bigger stages. Yes. Then also I had to learn different things like, oh, this is how you present yourself maybe mm. here. This is how you... Okay, basically I had to learn a little bit of different things yeah. here and there. Yeah, Not the usual way we're doing it. So yes. by the time I released the album, I'd read the... Lands the land the the landscape yes, and the fans preferences yeah like and what read, works sometimes better yes, than another one or yes. so how it came to make out as a pop. yeah so it came out as a proper project project nice, like nice the artwork nice. we did a painting a canvas for it beautiful yes beautiful so. it's a beautiful artwork so um have have you felt like the album has changed your status in the industry since your the release or have have some people kind of um, change their perceptions toward you or you've seen like people now take you more seriously yeah. because an album has dropped? Yeah. Uh, first of all, in Uganda, the album culture wasn't there too much. 
I think maybe in a few people, Navi has been releasing albums for a long time. I think he has now like <laughs> six. But in Uganda, generally, people don't release albums a lot. Mm. Be it the big artists, the so-called, yeah. the, the ones okay, like, who do the yeah. music that people relate to a lot. Um, they will release songs, but not albums. Mm. But now you'll see Shiba's release an album. Spice Diana's release mm. an album. Chameleon has released an album. Mm. These guys never used to release albums like for five years. Mm. But nowadays they're doing it a lot. So um, when I released my album uh, at that time, the change I think that I saw first of all was I had the number one album in the country. Nice. Congratulations. So to, yes. Thank you. <laughs> so to have the number one album for a long period and not just a uh, number one album in the hip hop charts, but number one overall, all hey. genres. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that was really uh, crazy. That was very, very, like, it was something different. So that's ah, but brought you in. deserve it, you do. Thank you, thank you. Katunda is involved. <laughs> yeah, so when we released the album and then when number one, Spotify, uh, iTunes, and all these different platforms, then the radio stations picked up the different singles that they could take. Obviously, everyone was like, wow, you made a complete project, you know, like. And the only challenge that we got off that was you don't know which single to push. Yeah. Because... These people are playing this song. These people are playing yes. this song. This, so you can't know which single to yeah. push. That's the only challenge that I got. But you cannot push Chapter Gay. Yeah, that's the. We just showed the video recently. Yes. And actually, I went and met Chapter Gay as well in Capture, where he comes from. Went to <gasps> his training camp. You met the real Chapter Gay. Yeah. I went to his training camp and had an interview with him. They were seated here. I also did something like this with him. Nice. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to release that as an extended version. So what did version. the legend think about a song being named after oh, him? Oh, he loves it. He loves it. He was humbled. And it's actually like one of the most humble people I met as well, understanding and uh, and okay, like he gave us his stories as well, his best race, his most memorable mm. races, you know, things like yes, that. Yes, yeah. yes, I want to go back a little bit to 2015, 2016. You know, you were part of the UG Hip Hop Cyphers. Yes. Um, there was a lot of hype around this. There's a lot of interaction from the fans. Yes. And this also led to MTV naming you as one of the rappers to watch, you know, coming from yeah. UG at such an early stage in your career before we even knew an album is going to drop. Do you yeah. remember that moment? Um, and how was it? Uh, I think, first of all, there was a, it was a beautiful moment, like the energy around it and also hip hop back then. I can't, okay. I think there's still like some hip, people were still doing it. It was hitting different then. Yes. The like hip hop back like, then was competitive. Yeah, right? You really want to write the best line. Every line has to make sense. Yeah. Every line you put next, yeah. like your delivery, your so you want to switch up the flows. You don't want to do the same flow. So every song you approach it differently. I think back then people cared a bit more. People really like wanted to create the music. It was art. Yeah. You're not caring about the money, the fame, yes. the online, you know, yes, the likes yes, and everything. Yes. Online but, hadn't even blew the way it has blown yeah, now. But then I think with time, some people get frustrated. Then other people also fall off because that's not seeing it going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. the media also pushing another, yeah. you get another style of music or mm -hmm. genre, you know. They prefer this. They're like, oh, the fans want this. They don't want this, you know. Like I keep telling them that like, you say the fans want that, but you're playing Rick Ross in the club. You're playing uh, a Lil Wayne song in the club, but then you're saying that the fans want Afro beats only. You get, so that's what's crazy. Yeah, but yeah, going back to that, uh, during that period, it was really exciting. We were pushing hard. So, I guess all the things, even though they wouldn't overwhelm us, we thought maybe they were part of it, like being named by MTV, like you're saying. We thought it was just part of it, like it's you're, you're working hard, so mm. some, some of the things have to, you have to expect yes. them. You get, that's how I think you can look at that. But it was, it, it was a very beautiful time for you, like just to set uh, a base, a foundation, yes. you know, for what you're passionate in. I think for, for, for you, it was a very instrumental period, no? Yeah, it was actually. And then you also did win a couple of awards, you know, at, yeah. the, M at the MTN UG Hip Hop Awards. Yeah, yeah. Which ones did you win? Do you remember? Uh, or do you want so Sam. many? You want so many that you don't. <laughs> no, like, uh, yeah, like. Uh, yeah, like, I'm, a, I'm, like a I'm just a winner, baby. I'm just a winner. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they have uh, the MTN Hip Hop Awards. I think I was nominated for Inspirational Song of the Year at one time with Wionga, Levickson. Levickson is a big gospel artist in Uganda. Mm. Um, then also we won video of the year. I won song of the year at one time. That's for Yenza Lipo. Um, others, I think, have been collabs and things like that. Yes. Then maybe yeah. the other awards from that period also was uh, the Buzz Awards. Mm. The Buzz is like the biggest teens celebrations. All mm -hmm. the teens come there. Then as well as uh, just last year, there's something called Galaxy Zina Awards. Mm. It's like popular, like the new popular 
award is taking place. Mm. I was also nominated for that. Nice. Then also before that, I, it was also for High People Music Awards. They're huge as well. Mm. They've been there for years. Okay. Yes. Nice. Yeah, different awards and stuff. Nice. And what kind of rapper are you? Are you the type of rapper, like if you hear something about yourself, you're going to come out with a response track? Are you the kind of rapper when you see other rappers in the club, you're like standoff ish, but then you're not going to get so <laughs> close to them? Or are you a friendly type of rapper? How do you guys roll? Like, I just want to, I see you and Navio and me. So, how do you guys roll? Like, are you saying hi to other rappers on the road and stuff like that? Yeah, or you guys just have your 100%. own crew? No, 100%. You have to interact. It's all love with everyone, you know. But obviously, like you said, that people are going to still mention things. You've never spoken to them. You've never interacted with them. But they'll come in the comments. They'll say something on a song. You get, like, subliminals and things like that. But over, I always ignore that. Like, I never give that energy. I keep it uh, the kind of rap I'll say. I'll say a Jay-Z kind of rap. Okay. <laughs> That's so you still don't have, like, it. a diss track out, like, responding <laughs> no, to somebody? No, no. Not at all. The myth has... Always, yeah, the myth, I think, has. He yeah. will have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard it, but I'm 100% yeah, no. sure he, he will have at least... He will have his tracks. lines once in a while here and there. <laughs> or he'll even um, slide in a diss in another song. Yeah. Just for the... For fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, congratulations for the re- release of your album. Thank you, um, thank you. I, I love it, and I think it's doing quite well. I yeah. mean, Chapter Gay is a dope track, yeah, and I think a lot of right Kenyans now. jump to it because yeah. they actually think um, that that runner is from Kenya, which is fine. <laughs> um, we are good. all sisters and yeah. brothers. Um, just before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you to maybe give five tips to becoming a dope rapper. To those who are watching or listening, yeah. um, you can look at your camera there. This one, that one. All right. Um, the first one I think will be keeping it real, keeping it authentic. You yourself. You don't have to, I think, want to rap like Nas or Jay-Z or next time you want to be Calligraph Jones, you know, you want to be King Kaka or anyone. You have to do it yourself. Be unique. Your own style will actually be appreciated mm-hmm. in your own way, you know. Uh, maybe another one also... You have to also pick what you want to do. Like, I can't say diversification is not bad. It's good to diversify. But it's also to pick something that you're good at and maybe master that one that you're good at. If you're good at lyrics, lyrics, go that. If you're good at um, maybe, let me see, like producing or something like that, you get something like which you're good at and maybe that's what you concentrate on. Mm. Uh, another one, of course, uh, create a fan base. Like, go crazy with the uh, online, uh, promote as much as possible. You don't know the next how your next break will be, like how the Justin Bieber's have made it through social media yeah. and things like that. So uh, then also maybe put yourself out there physically. If you're, there's an event where there's going to be artists and things like that, go out there, network, you know, interact with different people. The networking is actually important. You you get a connection to another person that's maybe where you meet the media people and actually many people even become friends with people through that and yes. they the person gives you another person another person like that. Yes. Then uh, the fifth thing maybe is consistency. Don't give up. It might look like as if it's not working out. Maybe yet you feel you're putting in a lot of work. Yeah. But keep going. Like you've seen, they say Oprah did this and this started a station at this year's. <laughs> McDonald's started at this year. Mm. You get you know all those stories, Disney and all the things. So. Maybe even news you can break, find your break at 40 or 50, or whatever. Yeah, you know? that, so I yeah, always I like that. Keep going. Yeah, I like that. There's always a, a starting place, so you just yeah. have to start 100%. You're never too late to start. Now, we can be on VIP access talking to the Fresh Prince of Kampala and not ask who are the freshest acts that we need to look out for from Kampala. Who are the fresh kids? Uh, rappers or just art, arts? Rappers and artists. Or in general? Whatever art. number, even if it's <laughs> one, you don't have to do no, a big um, list. There's a lot of new artists actually who are doing well. Uh, I missed that with maybe hip hop. I would say there's someone called The Homie, he's good mm-hmm. with his lyrics and everything. Um, there's St. Max Main, he's mm-hmm. really, really good. Does Luganda, mixes it with English, Afrobeats and dancehall, but nice. he's really good in hip hop. Um, Mio Made is a producer, but at the same time, he can sing and rap, you know, things like that. Um, there's Kaino, he actually won two awards last year at the Hip Hop Awards. Nice, yeah. Uh, we actually did a song with him as well with Navio. 
then um, this is a gang, it's a group of kids, it's a collective. They're new, they're, mm. they're really good as well. They're producers in there, they have like uh, writers, singers, it's a collective, they call themselves Zagang, mm. Kavali King and them. Um, which other new people? There's so many. Uh, there's so many. Okay. <laughs> I can't think of no, them right now. No, that's a good now. list. Yeah. And actually, I am very embarrassed. Like, I don't know all those artists. Yeah. Maybe They're I really know them. New. Yeah. They're very new. Yes. Maybe I know them, but I don't know. But I actually don't recognize. I mean, you've done a really great job already educating us of the new, like, kids um on the hip-hop game that we need to look out for asante sana it's been such an honor to speak to you asante, the paper. thanks for having me next yeah. time because of your name the paper i'll be like Shh. <laughs> i'll be yeah. throwing paper i didn't come with uh, I need some kenyan today. shillings <laughs> and yeah. me i need some UG shillings <laughs> um yeah thank you so much when you go back please say hi to my people 100 um that. and y'all just keep keep the fire burning i think uh, you all have really held the hip hop strong. You, Navio, um, the Myth, and all these new kids coming on the block. Yeah. I'm sure they're looking up to you and want to do the same. So it's it's a really great job you're doing um, all over East Africa and Thank beyond. You. I love um, the songs. I love the branding. I love the identity. I love how proud you guys are of Kampala yeah. and um, and UG. It's very very inspiring. It makes me ask myself, what am I doing? Um, for my country, yeah. how am I re using Kenya to rebrand myself or to brand various things? So that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I guess that's where we're capping off today on VIP Access. This is Flex the Paper. Thank you, thank you for having me. Check me out on social media at Flex the Paper on all platforms. Yeah, yeah. new and song Kamali out now of the album as well. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And we need you to go and stream Kampala Boy on all yeah. digital platforms. You can actually also find Not For Sale. Yeah. Now it's available on digital platforms. Um, and next week I will have another dope artist. Um, and you just don't know which country they'll be coming from. You just have to tune into VIP access. And um, yeah, and we'll be having another great conversation. VIP access. VIP access with Aniko on Africa Loud.